I'm Kaylee, and today I want to talk about the Bronte sisters. I've been reading a lot from Charlotte Bronte lately. I'm trying to read everything that the Bronte sisters ever wrote. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about them, their family, give a little bit of background on them. Then I'm going to talk about their writing style and kind of the themes that you see in a lot of their books. And then I'm going to go through the books of theirs that I have read or ones that I still need to read and talk about why these authors are my favorites. Before we get started, please do subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. It really does help me and it kind of makes me happy when I see that people like my videos. So one of the big central things that you have to understand about the Bronte family is their father, Patrick Bronte. He was a curate, that is a preacher, a pastor in Yorkshire, and he and his wife had six children. The children's mother, Maria, died in 1821, and then the children's aunt, Elizabeth Branwell, came to live with them and to take care of the children. She was a generous person, but really strict. And their father, Patrick, was eccentric and strict and just kind of weird. <laughs> and they all grew up very solitary. One of their habits was that they loved to walk out on the moors away from the village. Like they didn't want to walk towards the village where they would have to see people and talk to people. They wanted to be off on the moors on their own, just the sisters and their brother together. A lot of people think that Charlotte Bronte is actually the oldest of the sisters, but she's not. The oldest sister was Maria, and she actually died of tuberculosis when she was only 11. And then the next sister, Elizabeth, died of tuberculosis only a month later at the age of 10. So both of them had suffered from the cold and the bad diet at a boarding school, which was a school that actually inspired Lowood School in Jane Eyre. When their two older sisters passed away, Charlotte kind of took on this role as the older sister to take care of her younger sisters, Emily and Anne. They were all really imaginative as children. They wrote stories as part of their imaginative games. When they grew up, Charlotte taught as a teacher in a boarding school and worked as a governess. Anne worked as a governess and her experiences actually inspired the novel Agnes Grey. Emily taught at a school for six months, but her health declined so badly that she went back home. Her family believed that she actually just missed the moors so much that she made herself physically ill. And those moors and her love of the moors are definitely a major theme in her book, Wuthering Heights. Well, they hated teaching in schools and they hated being governesses, so they wanted to start their own school. But in order to do that, they really needed more education. So Emily and Charlotte attended a school in Brussels to learn French and German and music. It was terribly lonely and depressing for them. And their experiences there are really showcased in the novel, The Professor and in Villette. While Emily and Charlotte were in Brussels, they also taught some lessons at the school in order to help pay for their expenses. And that was really difficult for them. They had really difficult students. At this point, their father's failing eyesight and their brother Branwell's drunken behavior basically made it impossible for them to start the school as they had planned. And this was when the sisters began writing and publishing. Their first publication was a collection of their poems by Currer, Ellis, and Acton Bell. It was not popular and it only sold three copies. But they kept writing and in 1847, they published Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, and Agnes Grey. Now these novels were very popular and got a lot of attention, especially Jane Eyre. As these books got more attention in the media and more and more people were reading them, there was a rumor that Kerr, Ellis, and Acton Bell were actually one person. And so Charlotte and Anne were so upset by this that they actually traveled to London to meet their publishers in person and prove we're actually three separate people. In the next year, 1848, Anne wrote Tenant of Wildfell Hall, just feverishly writing. And she would say that she had a duty to warn others of the sad effects of self-indulgence. This novel was definitely influenced by Anne witnessing her brother's sad decline and his death that year. She really barely finished Tenet of Wildfell Hall and was able to see it published 
before she passed away too. So Branwell passed away and then Emily died a couple of months later and then Anne died about six or seven months after that. So all within the span of a year, Charlotte and her father Patrick lost all their remaining family members except just the two of them. And they all died mostly from tuberculosis along with other complications. This was a really depressing time in Charlotte's life, but she kept writing. This is when she finished writing and published Shirley, and it was an instant success. And a few years later, Charlotte married Arthur Bell Nichols. He was a curate who worked under her father, and in 1854, they were married. And they were very happy for about six or seven months. But then Charlotte died the very next year, also of tuberculosis, in 1855. At the time of her death, she was three or four months pregnant. This whole family, their lives are just full of so much tragedy. And yet, they took that tragedy and created these amazingly powerful, just incredible works of literature. Their writing is full of themes um, about loneliness and death, but there's also a lot of humor and brightness and sunshine in their works as well. Faith and religion are huge themes in their writing, and that's what gives their writing so much of its hopefulness. They write a lot about morality and virtue, like many Victorian authors. They tend to write about really independent characters, especially women who problem solve on their own and do things for themselves. And their settings tend to be isolated places like the desolate moors. There are a lot of wild landscapes in their books. Most of their books contain some form of feminism or at least commentary on the role of women in Victorian society. And they also did some social activism, you could say, shedding light on really bad conditions in boarding schools or showing how governesses are treated so badly by their employers. A lot of their books are about teachers and education, and I really love that. They tend to have these sort of rags to riches kind of tales of lonely people who find a family. And sometimes the rags to riches is not actual, you know, monetary gain, but it's more emotional gain of finding a relationship and, and love and loyalty in a family setting. So now let's get into some of their books and why I love them. First of all, let's go through Charlotte Bronte's works. Uh, Jane Eyre was the first book that I ever read by any of the Brontes, and I think it is still my favorite. This is about an orphan, Jane Eyre, who works as a governess and uncovers dark mysteries about her employer. This is always a five-star book. It is such a powerful and dramatic story. I really love Jane's character. Um, she's so relatable to me. She goes through so much pain and it just makes her stronger. This book is full of really passionate scenes. And of course we have the dark atmosphere of the creepy moors and the isolated manor house. And I found it really interesting that there are these like power dynamics. Um, there's this kind of struggle between Jane Eyre and Mr. Rochester. It's really emotionally engaging and just, I love all these complex characters. Another one of Charlotte's books is Villette. Lucy is a teacher at a French girls' school. She's trying to escape her tragic past when she falls in love with a man who is in love with someone else. Lucy is a really real character. Just She just feels like a real person. She's very self-denying. The internal psychology in this book is so incredible as it explores this theme of unrequited love. This can be a really depressing book because Lucy is depressed and lonely and isolated. It kind of explores how she finds self-confidence and how her behavior changes depending on who um, she is with. This is not your conventional love story. It's sort of an unpredictable plot. You never quite know who's gonna end up with who. <laughs> it's such a fantastic book. The Professor has very similar themes. It's almost as if uh, Charlotte Bronte wrote The Professor first, and she never published it in her lifetime, and then she kind of took the themes and the setting from that, and she rewrote it into Villette in a better way. So The Professor is like this lesser kind of mirror image of Villette. 
William is a teacher in a boarding school in Belgium. He criticizes his students a lot and I never liked him very much. He's an eccentric main character. It is kind of a problematic plot. It just has bad pacing. It was finally published posthumously, but it's definitely not one of my favorites. Then we have Shirley, which is the one I read most recently. Shirley is about the friendship between Caroline and Shirley, and that friendship is strained when they both appear to have fallen in love with the same man. I like that this one deals with industrial themes. There are a lot of disgruntled workers who are making trouble. This one has so many great feminist themes and independent ladies who just want to do what they want to do. <laughs> this one talks about women who long for action, just like the men. They're sick of sitting around and they want to do important things in the world. This book is just so emotionally powerful and the characters are so complex. They're like these puzzle pieces that I want to figure out. How is this character put together? What are their motivations? Why are they doing that? Shirley is amazing. And there are a couple, I think, of Juvenalia of Charlotte Bronte's that I have not read, and I have not read the snippet of Emma. This is the beginning, just the first little bit of a story that she was starting, uh, and then she passed away and was unable to finish it. And I have not read that yet, but I intend to soon. Then let's go ahead to Emily Bronte. She only ever published um, one thing besides the poems, uh, the, their collection of poems, she only ever published Wuthering Heights. This book is so dark and moody that at the time it was published, reviewers speculated that the author might be mentally disturbed. <laughs> I think that kind of sums up how I feel about Wuthering Heights. None of the characters are likable. The story structure has an unreliable narrator, and some people like that, I do not like that. It's just not my cup of tea. It is, of course, as many people will tell you, not a love story. It's a story of revenge. There is madness and passion and drama, but I feel like it just goes a little too far. It goes so far that I can't enjoy it. All that passion just tears people apart. It does have really impressive language. You know, the, the writing is just so rich. And of course, the Moors are so vividly described that they feel like their own character in the story. I am planning to reread Wuthering Heights. I don't think I've read it since I was like 18 or something. So it's been a couple of decades, okay? Um, I think I'm going to reread it and see how I approach it as an adult, as a little bit wiser and older instead of reading it as a teenager. And you never know. I might change my mind about Wuthering Heights. I'm gonna give it another chance. And then we come to the lovely Anne Bronte. Agnes Gray is about a governess who is treated poorly by her employers, but she finds friends among the poor and religious people. I think the coolest thing about Agnes Gray is that it is somewhat autobiographical because so many of the things in this book are taken from Anne Bronte's real experiences. Being a governess is kind of a complex social position because you're not a servant, but you're not one of the family either. And so you're kind of in this in-between place where it's a very lonely place to be. Agnes Gray is another one of these characters that goes through so much pain and tragedy, and yet she's very determined. She's very strong and with just this quiet strength. And this is sort of a quiet, reflective book. There's not a lot of drama and passion and, you know, crazy stuff happening. It's just sort of the slow day-to-day -day reflections of a person. Um, and I really like that. It has this quiet power behind it. Um, but it doesn't have to be flashy and dramatic. Agnes Gray is such a fantastic book. And then we have Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Helen hides away from her abusive husband and tries to live an isolated but independent life. I really love the story structure of this because we get these different perspectives um, from Helen and from another main character, Gilbert. He's kind of trying to figure out this mystery of this Helen woman. You know, what, what is she all about? What is she doing here in the neighborhood? The themes of this one are so important and so indicative of what Anne was going through as she watched her brother Branwell succumb to alcoholism. So there are a lot of themes about abuse and money and alcoholism and self-indulgence. But my favorite is how Helen is so independent. She basically just claims this right 
to create a life for herself that is safe. I find that the characters in this one are just really believable. Like I just, I think they're real people. That That's how a real person would react or a real person would say that or would feel that way or do that thing. This book is such a masterpiece. Then we have The Poems by Currer, Ellis, and Acton Bell. These I have not read yet, but I intend to very soon. I find that I just have to be in the right mood to read poetry. And if I'm not in the right mood, then it's just, it's just no good. So I have to wait for one of those poetry moods to envelop me. And then I'm gonna pick this one up and read it. So please leave me a comment down below and let me know what is your favorite book by the Bronte sisters. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.